In this lesson, we're going to look at the clone stamp tool and see what kind of uh, functionality we can get out of that tool. You, you'll start to see, once you see how it works, you'll start to see uh, some of the, hopefully it'll open up some creativity for you and you'll start to see what you can use the tool for down the road. But let me uh, go ahead and fire up Photoshop Touch. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to work with a picture that I already downloaded into my camera roll. So I'm going to add a picture from my camera roll. It's this picture of moons right here. Or one, I should say right now. My game plan is to take this one picture with one moon in it. And obviously, when you talk about the clone stamp, uh, you're taking a part of the picture, you're cloning it over to another piece of, or another part of the, uh, the image, the graphical image here. So I'm in clone stamp already, which if you're not there, it's... Uh, down about two thirds of the way down the uh, down the menu, and uh, you can find it right there. You'll notice the source is uh, you've got your brush brush adjustments that you can make. And again, I'm using the the brand new as of May 2014 version of Photoshop Touch. You've got your brush find adjustments uh, in there, which if you don't have those, just go ahead and update Photoshop Touch, and you'll get those for free uh, if you own the program. So you still get all your brush measurements. Uh, and then you also have this, uh, this dialogue below it called source. And what the source allows you to do is it allows you to pick what you want for your source that will be copied uh, to another part of your image. So when it's white, that means the source function is on. If I hit it, it goes to black and it turns off. So the steps in terms of creating a clone, anytime you're using the clone stamp tool, the first thing you have to do is set your source. So I'm going to turn it on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click directly in the middle of the moon. And what you'll see after you click on the source, two things happen. You'll see a, a, a horse, a, a crosshair right in the middle of the moon. And you'll also see, th see the source trigger turned off as well. So that crosshair that you see surrounded by a circle, that is basically when I start to paint, that is what's going to be painted. And I just kind of want to show you real quick in terms of the brush. I'm looking at a brush size of 67. I'm actually going to shrink that up a little bit to in somewhere in the 30s. Uh, flow and opacity, both are at 100%. Hardness is at zero. That looks good. Whenever you're using the clone stamp, you pretty much the only thing you'll change will be the brush size. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start I'm going to start painting over here in the very top right corner. And I'm going to, if you notice, as I paint with my brush at the top right, you'll see the circle comes off the crosshair, and you'll see just a crosshair. Now the one thing that I'm going to be challenged with in this particular picture is that the background on the moon behind the moon is a little bit different and you'll see right when I get to the edge of the moon here you'll see the the background will start to appear um, actually only gonna get based upon where I started I'm only gonna get the kind of the third moon going on I don't know maybe I'll fit the whole moon in here I keep going and see what happens yeah good there okay so I start painting fill in real quick. I'm going to change the size of my brush when I get the chance to because this is taking me way too long. So basically I've replicated one moon already. And I've got that in the top right. Let me change the size of the brush real quick. Let's go back. I was probably better off in the 60s or 70s. That looks good right there. Back to 68. Now here's the idea with this clone stamp and you've got to really watch out. Let's say I want to put another moon in between these two moons. I could automatically start painting, right? and I'll, I'll get another moon. And what you realize is you're not getting another moon. If you notice, um, I'm painting close to the moon I just placed in, and I'm not sure if you can see it. I'll highlight it on the video, but you'll see the crosshair is over to the left of the moon that I want. So in essence, the clone stamp works like this. It's based upon the distance between your source and what you're painting. So when I was painting on the moon, I could actually see the source go to the beyond the original moon. Let me undo that real quick. And what I'm going to do, so I'm going to want another moon, so I'm going to reset my source. So I'm going to push my source, keep my source on, put the source right back smack dab in the middle of the moon, and the minute I touch the touch screen with my pointer, that's going to lock in that distance between my source and my paintbrush. So let me start painting, and I'm good to go again. So anytime you want to duplicate anything else, you must always reset your source before you try to get that done. And again, I'm having that same issue with the background being a little bit lighter, which you see on the, the duplicate. Okay, so we got another moon there. I'm going to reset the source. Let's put one more in just for the heck of it. I'll put one in down here, and I start painting in my other moon. And then you'll see it work out that way. 
I got my other moon going there. And I could fill this screen with with moons many, many, many times. I could actually go back through and adjust the uh, you know the the halo that you see around the new moons relatively easily. Uh, if I used it, use some, uh, you could actually use the uh, the uh, the healing brush here. Um, I won't do that for this video, but just understand that that's probably what you would want to go back and do is go back and uh, fix the haloing effect around the moons.